Today on VIP TV, a gentleman who went down very well last year when he spoke to us ahead of his fight against Zelfa Barrett, uh, one of the stars of Irish boxing, Eric Donovan. Eric, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Stephen. Thanks for having me, as always. Good. Um, first of all, what's happening with your um, European EU super featherweight title fight against Mario Alfano? I think he's been off about three times, isn't it, already or twice? Yeah, oh man, um, just like I'm gutted over that, like because at the end of 2020, which was a, a tough year for everybody with the whole COVID and the lockdown, and me personally as well, me and Laura, my fiance, we were supposed to get married in Spain, and yeah, everything kind of went, you know, by the wayside. Yeah, and then I got the break on Eddie Hearn's uh fight camp against self uh, barrett you know prepared for that trained very hard and believed in myself but came up short ultimately in the end um and then on the final day of 2020 the last day i think it was the 31st of december the boxing union of ireland emailed me and said eric you're mandatory for the eu super fed with it and i was like oh what a brilliant news got on the final day of what has been a real real tough year so um and then obviously fight the, the purses it went to purses and everything and they won the purse bid and it was I was supposed to fight in Lombardy on the 15th of May 2021 and uh, 10 days before the fight I fractured my ribs in a spar uh, I was absolutely gutted I, I had fractured them two years previously so I redone an old fracture and it was just absolutely devastating because I really believed that I was going to go over there and become a European champion and um so that's where that's that was my kind of last kind of close encounter with with a fight, uh, and right up till then I've I've just been resting my ribs. I had holiday last week in Donegal, and now I'm back training this week and hoping to get back in the ring in September, Steve. And will that be against Alfano? It could possibly be. Uh, what happened in the in the kind of uh, aftermath of my ribs getting done and having to pull out a fight on medical grounds. Alfano went ahead with the fight and the promoter got a replacement because he had invested so much money into the fight and it was on Italian TV and everything like that, as you know yourself, when, the, you know, it's not easy to put on a boxing show and the last thing you want promoters to be doing is losing out on all of the, the costs and, and the whole show falling apart. So we, we, we gave the European Union to go ahead if they wanted to. They said that I would hold on to my mandatory status uh, either way. Um, so a guy called In Cherry, um, In Cherry, who was a lightweight from Italy, came down to Super Federal and boxed Alfano and beat him on points oh, I didn't over know 12 he rounds. Me. So he's now the new year. Oh, yeah. I, did, I didn't know that. Yeah. I knew Alfano yeah. had lost previously yeah. when he challenged you. I didn't know Alfano mm. had lost twice fighting for that title. I had no idea about yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I knew one. And this guy, wow. this Inchiri guy, is brilliant because, yeah, he, he he's very good. When he when, when when he got the... When I got the news that he was stepping in, um, I knew he was going to beat Alfano because I watched him boxing... Patera, the lightweight European champion. Oh, yeah, good fighter. Good, good fighter, yeah. 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 And he boxed Patera over eight rounds. Just, I think it was a keep busy fight for Patera. Patera won a points, but I thought this guy won, and Cherry won. I thought he won the fight. So he's a good fighter, really, really good fighter. And so he came up trumps against Alfano. So we, we have that possibility. That's there. That's a possibility uh, in September if we want it. Um, but, but I'm going to leave it at into Mark's hands. Mark Dunlop is my manager. He wants me to fight back at my own weight, featherweight. Yeah. I am a featherweight. I'm naturally, a, I'm naturally a featherweight. So I'm featherweight Irish champion. So he wants me to kind of be campaigning at my own weight. The opportunity that time against Self or um, Self or Barrett was a, was a step up, but we, it was one that we, we, we felt the rewards were, were so big that we wanted to, we, we wanted to take it. Um, and against Alfano, that was a super feather, but we felt that we had his number. Like we, we really had his number. So we were going to take that because the possibilities of me winning that fight were very, very high. And um, 
and maybe come like I was never going to campaign as super featherweight anyways after that. It was always just about getting that belt and securing the belt. So look, we don't I I'm I'm happy to box at either way, featherweight or super feather, but Mark wants me at featherweight. He thinks I'm he thinks I'm better and I'm stronger at featherweight. Um so that's the plan. Um to get back into a big fight in September, whether it's going to be a world ranking title fight or the European title fight or something along those lines. I know there's a big one coming up, uh, coming down the line. Who would you like it to be? If you, if you were said, you know, who you could, who do you want next fight? Who would you pick? If you could pick anyone in, in a fight, you'll consider winnable where you are in your career at the moment. Yeah, I would like it to be against, um, the European, uh, Union featherweight champion from Italy. Um, God, what's his name? Uh, I'll have to look him up. Gives me at the minute. Um, EU champion. Trying to find him. EU uh, lightweight. EU featherweight. Yeah. And and is 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 Mark making the um you know pressing for that fight? Uh, Mark is like he also Mark's not Mark at the moment is on holiday so I have to I have to talk to him when he gets back but uh, we are we are going to have to have the business discussion about who's my next fight who's it going to be Jordan Gill is another one I would love yeah, that's to have a, that's um, a... I think it's a brilliant fight I would love that fight and then obviously you would aspire to be in with the like Likes of, um, you know, Jazza Dickens, Kid Galahad. Yeah, you, know, you this, be this, looking at that These fight, guys, yeah. you know. Ah, yeah. Like, these are road warriors, these boys. Like, you know, they've been going a long time. And rightly so now, they're in a good position, both of them, to, to make a dream come true. But, you know, I've been around a long time. I don't want to jump too far. I don't want to run before I can kind of walk. But I would love to start off maybe at that EU level, you know, and get get this... Uh, get this uh, fight with the European champion. Um, I can't think of his name. His name has just escaped me. Uh, I'll look at the EBU website. I, I, yeah. I look at the EBU. I tell you, you can be telling us while I'm looking this up, something you will know from the top of your head. Tell, tell us about um, the Ireland's hopes at the Olympics, uh, men, men's and women's this year. And then we'll go back to the EU. Yeah, so I'll tell you what it was. Uh, we never really expected, Steve, to um, have seven boxers going to the Olympic Games in Tokyo. You know, Irish boxing has had um, a real kind of a resurrection in, in, in the last few weeks, really. But it, it, the, the 2016 Rio Olympics were probably one of our worst ever Olympic Games. We went out with so much promise, right, so man. much potential, so with our best with our best ranked team ever. You know, we had three or four of those fighters who were ranked top three in the world. Joe Ward, Conlon, Michael Conlon, Conlon Paddy Katie Barnes. Taylor, Michael. It was Paddy yeah. Barnes, yeah. Michael O'Reilly, yeah. Paddy, yeah, Paddy Barnes. Um, do you know, uh, uh, Stephen Donnelly was there as well. Um, Brendan Irvine. These guys, we, we, we had a serious team going out there and, and then just Michael O'Reilly failed the drugs test. And then Joe Ward got, you know, beat, beaten. I think he got public warning and everything in his fight. And just one thing after another just got kept getting worse and worse and worse. And our best team that ever went to Olympic Games came home empty handed and seemed to be in a, the whole association seemed to be in a bit of disarray after that. There was a lot of a, a huge fall fallout from that because Michael Conlon controversy around his fight as well and the judging scandal and everything it was really really bad time for boxing uh internationally but also locally here and so we've been trying to do that whole team the whole team has been basically either turned professional or retired or gave it up or or whatever packed it in um and just one just one boxer that we have still active from that team, which is Brendan Irvine. He was a flyweight uh, in Rio and he has secured his place again this this time around. So he's going to his second Olympics. And then the other six are brand new, brand new. But we have a strong ladies team going out yeah. there. Michaela Walsh, Kelly oh. Harrington, uh, Aoife O'Rourke. Yeah, three internationally 
re renowned fighters on the on the on the on the women's boxing circuit. Like they've all medaled at major championships, and Kelly is the reigning Kelly, world yeah, champion. Like, uh, so yeah, so Kelly's kind of coming in there, carrying that Katie Taylor's mantle, stepping into her shoes basically. But Kelly's been around a long time, almost in the shadows of Katie Taylor. On um, like, uh, t t not too like not too because she wasn't good enough or anything like that. It just happened to be a bit, uh, uh, what would you say, a bit younger than Katie and also um, kind of just on the fringes of that, breaking onto that scene. And she was in the same weight category as Katie as well. So she was kind of just behind on the heels of Katie Taylor. A lot of people actually thought they were going to, they were going to fight once upon a time, but then Katie turned professional and Kelly has stepped in and, uh, almost take that mantle as I said and she's doing it just as too you know she's stepping into the stepping into that place and she's making it her own she's a world silver medalist she's a world champion she's a European medalist and uh, she's fantastic now and the, the country's getting behind her back home here you know she's a real um, working class hero kind of you know she comes from the inner city in Dublin and uh, oh, wow. she's Get a the... very likeable person and she yeah yeah you know, when you say that, you know, everyone's getting... such a fan base, and yeah, is there a lot of pressure on her, like expectancy? Like, you know, you had that big expectancy at the 2016 Olympics for the Irish team. Is there mm. that, ex you know, 2012? You know, I, I was at the boxing in 2012, and mm. the greatest noise in the arena was when Katie Taylor fought. Is there that sort, you know, cause, but they're, you know, mm. Ireland expected, are you know, is are, are the Irish public expecting with Kelly to get the gold medal? Well, I think there's a hell of a lot more um, kind of, a, what would you say, a lot, a lot more awareness about Kelly Harrington now. Uh, people wouldn't have been, like, she hasn't really had that same exposure and publicity as Katie Taylor had yeah. previous to uh, the, London, the London Olympics, you know. So Katie was kind of... Um, Katie got a hell of a lot of uh, exposure, publicity, and in some ways you would think that uh, there was more pressure on Katie Taylor because she was probably single-handedly responsible for getting women's boxing. Well, she was one of the reasons, anyway, for getting women's boxing into the Olympics in the first place. But then there was also, I remember, this big banner in Dublin city centre that was hanging about six stories high off the side of a building, and it was a life-size picture of Katie Taylor with the caption underneath it, only the strongest shoulders can carry the hopes of a nation. Do you know? <laughs> like, yeah, that's talk big, about yeah. Talk about prey. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, everybody, Katie Taylor was destined to be, you know, the Olympic champion. So, I, I can imagine the pressure would have been huge on her. But Kelly Harrington now is starting to gather a bit of that momentum as well. People are starting to take notice of her. Probably not as many as, as, as Katie Taylor had which is probably going to help Kelly and will benefit her. But over the last few weeks, she just qualified. Um, so that there was that like there was still that kind of uh, uncertainty around qualification because everything boiled down to one last Olympic qualifying tournament. And Kelly had to go out there and box uh, Hamadouche, who was a French uh, professional champion. She was the IBF featherweight champion. Um, yeah. So um, Kelly had to box her, and it's very rare you get the professional world champion versus an amateur world champion in an amateur contest. So that was absolutely brilliant. And then she boxed another girl called um, uh, Dubois' sister, was it? Um, oh, Caroline uh, Dubois', Dubois, Dubois yeah, Caroline, yeah, Caroline, yeah, Caroline. Caroline Dubois, yeah. yeah. So these are all really, really top, top uh, medal prospects for the Olympic Games, and Kelly was. Uh, Kelly's after coming up trumps and she won that competition. She won that recent Olympic uh, competition. I think it was in Paris. And uh, so that would give her a huge confidence going forward here into this, um, into the Olympic game. So Kelly is, Kelly's a huge medal hope. So is Michaela Walsh. Michaela Walsh is the younger, or is the sister of Aidan Walsh. So we yeah. have a brother and sister. Yeah, I, knew, I remember time. reading about them the yeah. other week. Actually. First time. As soon as you said Michaela, I remember yeah. I saw a picture of them the other week. Yeah. Quite big news, wasn't it, in Ireland? Yeah. Yeah, I saw a big yeah, picture huge, of them, yeah. Huge, because it's the first brother and sister, yeah. Yeah, first brother and sister that we have. Yeah, I remember. The games uh, to represent Ireland. And um, 
Michaela has been around a good while too. She boxed the uh, didn't she box Nicola Adams in the yeah. Conway Games as well in the final one time. And so it shows you like you know she's dedicated, she's hungry, she's passionate. She's been around a long time. She was probably uh also she would she would have been around. Um, She's she's a senior boxer now. She's 27, 28, I think. So yeah. she, so she, she, she would she, have been too young for London or ju- just about. She'd about 19 in London. She didn't go to London 2016. Yeah, yeah. She would have been just coming yeah. onto the senior scene at that time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now she's, she, 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 she's broken down that door, you know, and she's got there and her brother's going there as well. But there's a fascinating story as well, a real fairy tale story around a guy, a light heavyweight called Emmett Brennan. Um, he's 30 years of age. He he is he's been boxing since he was 10 years old, but he never really broke onto the international circuit until only a couple of years ago when he won his first elite title. Um, and he was never funded, never backed, never sponsored or anything. And in 2019, he took out a credit union loan for himself to support himself and fund himself because he was going all in. You know, he said, "I'm going all in this time. I believe in myself. I back myself." And he went along and and he secured his place in the Olympic Games. And oh, I just wow. think that's unbelievable. Like, yeah. you know, because you have the pressures of trying to qualify and the stress of that without having to put yourself in the red financially as well on top of that. So it's just, it's the stories you like to hear. You know what? That's the Corinthian spirit of what the Games really was about before this elite funding come yeah. in. You know, that, that's what the Corinthian spirit yeah. of the Olympic Games is all about. But back to yourself, and I hope that, that the hope the EU featherweight champion isn't as formidable as Kelly Harrington. It's uh, Mauro Forte. <laughs> Forte, yeah. Yeah, he's held the yes, title. I just couldn't think of his name. Yeah, he's, Maro, he's, Maro Forte. He's held the title. Um, uh, and I, I, I've, I've checked this up while I've been speaking to you. December 2019, he won the title. So, mm, mm. Do, do yeah, I'd know? love to fight him. I really would. You know, I think he's a great fighter. And I think that would be then a, a stepping stone to uh, the Adoni Gago, the full European title holder. You know, he was he was boxing Gavin McDonald recently. Or is, is it Gavin or is it the brother? Was it the brother? Um, it Gavin? Hold on. Is it Gavin? Gavin McDonald was the one who lost it, who had the fight in Spain recently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he lost he had in the Spain cut. Yeah, yeah, he got yeah. the cut. Yeah. yeah. So I was keeping a keen eye on that fight as well. So that's kind of like, you know, the stepping stone for me would be like to, to get in against uh, Maro uh, Forte. And so what's Maro name to Forte, pronounce, as in the he? hotel chain, Maro Forte. Maro Forte, yeah, I'd love yeah. to get a crack at him and then get a step in against the full Euro- for the full European title against Adoni Gago. So he's the Spaniard. You know what? There's so uh, much out there. customers, but I think I can beat them. But besides them, even near a home, there's so much for you. You mentioned Jordan Gill, you know, super featherweight. Although maybe you know he's going into lightweight. You know, you know John O'Carroll. You know what about Michael Conlon? These fights. Mm. What about Anthony Kakachi, these guys, you know, they are up in yeah. Belfast, or would you need those really at featherweight? Because John O'Carroll and Kakachi are giants at super mm-hmm. featherweight, aren't they? They're really lightweights coming down, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're big guys. They're strong guys, you know. John O'Carroll, like, is, uh, he's a great fighter. Like, you know, we had a bit of a banter there, a bit of a, uh, there's a bit of a kind of call, call, well, I, I wouldn't say he was calling me out, but he there was he, he had he had no opponent for one of his fights there recently. Oh, I said yeah. I'd step in, you know, and he goes, <laughs> Who are, yeah, he, you know, but look, it's all a bit of banter. But John it is. John always worked hard to get himself into the yeah. position that, that into the position that he's in. And he's very he's very money orientated, John O is he's very money driven, you know. Um he's uh, and he look, that's his own business, that's what he is. wants to do, and he wants to see, he, he wants to secure a future for his family and for his kids and all and fair play to him but like for me it's more about for me it's more about um fulfilling uh, a, a kind of a fulfilling an ambition a goal a desire because i slipped up more i slipped up and i feel like i let myself down in my amateur career so i boxed my whole amateur career while being in active addiction and i won a hell of a lot but I left so much behind, you know, and I just want to put it right. I want to put my career right and finish out with integrity, with, um, you know, with honesty, with passion. And I believe that if I could get the European title shot, then that would be, for me, 
uh, the icing on the cake. And I would be able to kind of be content then with myself and with my career. And um, I would feel somewhat kind of um, compensated for past mistakes. Eric, you know what? It's been a brilliant 20 minutes of you. Always fascinating. You just have to say, how are you, Eric? And you'll just ramble away and tell me everything. If we can, <laughs> perhaps we can catch up during the Olympics when these, um, yeah. these Irish boxers are hopefully flying. Yeah, that would be great, actually. Yeah, and I must mention Kurt Walker as well, who is the European champion now. And he, he had good wins over your Peter McGrail and stuff as well. So, like, uh, Kurt Walker, but the only danger with Kurt Walker, Steve, is that I, he's after qualifying based on his ranking points. So, right, yeah. but he hasn't been really in any meaning, meaning, yeah, do you know, he's, he's so mean, many, yeah. so high ranking points that he, qual- he qualified, but he hasn't been really in any meaningful competitions or tournaments for the last two years. You know what? It's like Paddy Barnes was the first to qualify in the world, I think, for 2016. And he didn't have, you know, he didn't have a fight yeah. for a year, did he? Yeah, no, mm. that's it. You know, and I'm, I'm just thinking about that. Like, I think all of the boxers who just came through the, the most recent qualifying tournament will be still in kind of season mode. They'll be in top form. They'll be, you know, after they'll be on an all-time high as well after coming through some great fights and getting their qualification play secured. But the guys that have been qualified for the last 12 months plus, I'd be worried a little bit about them because they've had that, They've had, they haven't had that stress or that kind of peak, that peak competition to help them, uh, their development coming in. But um, this, look, I mean, I, if you told me I would qualify for the Olympic Games uh, three years in advance, I'd break your hand for oh, it. Sure like, you know, yeah. I really would. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right, then we'll have been fantastic catching up with you. And we'll catch up next month, you know, after a couple rounds of the games to see who's standing out for you in the Olympics. We'll call you VIP Boxing's Olympic correspondent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Steve. Thank you very you much. T- you take care. It's always a pleasure. For all boxing, info, news, and latest interviews, amateur and pro across and off, click and subscribe. VIP Boxing Promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.